Check, check, check. Mike, one, two, one, two. So, guys, who's in the garage today? Let's find out. Garage. Hey, kids. What's up? This is Mike Champion here at Mike's Garage. Here. We just wrapped up one of the coolest Legends events ever going. Um, and it was just too bad you guys couldn't be there. I'll be here at Frank's Garage this Friday at 11 o'clock California time to chat with my good, very good friend Frank the Great about what happened, what's going on, and all kinds of little things. So tune in. You better. Bye. innovator, marketer, and athlete, Tom Sims was snowboarding's first pioneer and revered as one of the most influential figures of snowboarding in the early stages of the sport, including exposing millions to snowboarding when he served as a stunt double for Roger Moore in the 1985 James Bond film, A View to Kill where he shredded glaciers, dodged gunfire, and straight-lined a pond on the first take. As a teenager growing up in Haddonfield, New Jersey, Tom Sims was a dedicated skier and skateboarder. In seventh grade, he cobbled together what he dubbed a ski board in shop class and rode it down snowy hills at the local country club. In the late 1960s, Sims moved to California and began fashioning full-size snowboards as well as longboard skateboards. He founded Sims Snowboards and Skateboards and opened his doors in 1976, a full year before any other snowboarding brand. Sims had the vision, drive, and creative mind to revolutionize equipment established snowboarding half pipes as a major event and eventually earned him credit for his role in establishing snowboarding as an Olympic sport. His technological breakthroughs remain legendary even today, though Tom never had the capital to adequately finance his own company. His early team riders include John Palmer, Craig Kelly, Terry Kidwell, and Shannon Dunn. Tom also left his own mark as a competitor, winning slalom at the U.S. Open of snowboarding and capturing the legendary Mount Baker Bank Slalom title, both in 1985. Perhaps most of all, Sims was the ideal poster boy for the board sports image and lifestyle constantly pushing to combine surfing and skateboarding tricks and showcase them on snow. On September 12, 2012, Tom Sims passed away due to complications following cardiac arrest at a hospital near his home in Santa Barbara, California. Eleven years prior to his death, Tom married Hillary Sims, who was already actively involved with the business. Hillary and a small Sims team, along with the backing of Never Summer Industries, have worked to revitalize the brand and return it to core snowboarding retailers. The company has partners in Japan who have played a major role in revitalizing the brand there, with everyone pushing forward to honor Tom Sims' iconic legacy. For igniting snowboarding as its first pioneer, Tom Sims earns entry into the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. That's right. Welcome to the Petal Garage, guys. Today we're gonna have a little issue to connect with our dear friend Mike Chantry. Uh, Mike is not gonna be on camera. Is in his garage actually, and he's live in tow. Hi, Mike. Hey guys, how you doing, kids? <laughs> youngsters, campers, all over. Oh my gosh, Mike. I'm so sorry that we are facing some troubles to put you on camera and come on the garage. We just watch. <laughs> We just watched a three minutes of Legacy of Tom Sims, and you just yeah. end up an amazing weekend. 
39 years um, before um, Tom Sims' first snowboard halfpipe competition. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I know you were trying to struggle to come on the live and figure it out, but um, you know everything. You don't even need to see that just legacy we just uh, watch. Uh, what can we say about the guy we consider as the godfather of snowboarding, actually? There's really not much you can you can't say. It's just like he was there in the beginning. He had the ideas. He had the the vision. Um, he he gave us the stoke, you know. And then that one weekend when I when he was like watching everybody skate mile high ramp in my backyard, and then we went over to Tower City Pipe. And he was looking at that and scratching his head. And he goes, you know, we should do a pipe in the, in, in a contest. So we kind of put our heads together and we went up and talked with Soda Springs and they're like, what the hell is a half pipe? You know, that's the question everybody was asking, what's a half pipe? So, you know, we jumped, Tom jumped in the cat and I walked the walls with a shovel, you know, sh trying to, sh you know, work on the shapes and stuff. So we spent all day, probably half the night pushing snow and moving everything around. And then in the end he goes, that's a half pipe. And we looked down and went, that's a ditch, that's not a half pipe. You know, so he goes, hey, it's a half pipe, whatever. So we did that one. It went down, you know, and there's, there's, there's just like oh, so many stories about, you know, the, the first worlds and the, the pipe event. People saying, that's not, a, that's not snowboarding. This is snowboarding and da -da 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 -da, back and forth. And I go, well, there's an East Coast and a West Coast thing. And, you know, we all came from the skate and surfing background out here. And the East Coast is more to the racing and, you know, and, and you know, Writing on bulletproof ice, so. Well, anyway. that's right. Uh, well, guys, if you join the garage today, it's special. Uh, the guy who's talking and he's like a ghost in the garage is himself in his garage in Tao. <laughs> Mike Chantry is for you there, a, snowb a snowboard pioneer, uh, head judge at ISF, the real deal back in the days. Also, X Game judges, snowboard event a supervisor, filmmaker, is the chief historian archivist at International Snowboard and Skate Historical Archive. And we just talk about the legacy that you see right now, uh, Mr. Uh, Tom Sims, who had such a huge, huge family all around the world for all the writers who rode for him. Um, so first question, uh, what is Tao City Pipe? You just talk about it. What, what started there? Um, back in the late 70s, around, I don't know, but late 70s, let's say, Terry Kidwell, um, Alan Armbruster, Mike An uh, Mark Analick, Bob Klein, a few others came on this ditch. It's the old dumps, the Tyler City dumps. It was abandoned, and there's a gully that goes down into the dumps that you could ride. It was like a huge bank slalom almost, but we would go up there and shovel it. After they discovered it, we spent a whole day shoveling, and, and it was only like maybe three hits, and that was it. And at its best, it was one hit, you know, and it was just a drop in and, and hit the wall. And then for us, you know, goofy footers, it was a backside, you know, and then a front side. And for regular footers, it was a front side. So, they, you know, they were loving it. And it was kind of like a secret spot. Everybody around the lake knew it, but nobody outside the lake knew where it was or what was going on with it. And you had to hike in from the, from the road. We parked in some guy's yard. Hopefully nobody would tow our car away or get it plowed in. <laughs> And then we'd hike in there and spend the day, you know, riding back there. And as soon as we got video cameras, that's when it became, you know, it, it went, you know, global almost, I think. Uh, as soon as my videos started popping up in snowboard shops and ski shops and stuff. So, Mike, what, but, wait, uh, what, one question. When did you discover yeah. snowboarding, actually? It was the, the end of the... Yeah. The, the, that was the yellow banana board back in the 70s with, with Lonnie Toth. You know, riding for Tom, and we started riding those things. It had the experimental board on top. The every, a lot of guys just wanted the, the the banana board for the skate deck because you couldn't buy it in the shop. You know, it was a, it was a custom made board for that. You know, he made it bulletproof, waterproof, whatever. You know, on that and they would just like take the board, take that deck off, and skate on it. And then in the winter time, they put it back on the, the banana board. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, go ahead. And that's amazing. And and your first time you met Mr. Tom Sims, do you remember? Uh, what was that meeting about? Yeah, it was 70, 70, 
75, yeah, 75 on a trip down to LA. And then uh, in 76, we went down and hung out with him again at a couple of contests. And 77 was the first time I started staying at his house in Santa Barbara. And then I would go down there with Ted Terrebonne, uh, photographer for a lot of the magazines and Thrasher and Skateboarder and stuff like that. And we would always stop at his house and stay, you know, when we were going to the contest and on the way back, we'd stay at his house too. And then we'd go surfing, you know, with him and, and stuff. But we developed a really good close friendship. And then he, he just discovered that I was in Tile City. So he's like, oh, I got these boards I want to experiment with. So the next winter, I started getting shipments, UPS drops of snowboards, you know, like 10, 12, 14, 16 different boards to test. You know? And then I go, well, I guess Tom's coming up. And I call him, yeah, can you pick me up tonight at Reno? I'm like, okay. <laughs> we spent like a weekend. We spent a weekend or three or four days testing boards, hiking around the, you know, the, the passes and stuff. And, and, and not to mention, stuff. Mike, at that time, snowboarding was not very welcome. And Tao, actually, which is one of the nest of snowboarding for all of you guys, so many legends uh, were uh, yeah. from up there. Um, at that time, it was strictly forbidden uh, to take any ski lifts or whatever. Skiers made a tough time for snowboarding, and now it's an Olympian sport. We just watched the Olympics 2022 with a crazy triple cork. I mean, sports <laughs> has been evolved so much. Yeah. And it was a tough time back then. But we were like, all right, rebels. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We just, there was like a grudge match. It was like skiers hated us. We hated skiers. You know, we'd, we'd slash them or, or ride over the, the ends of their skis or the tails of their skis with our boards and gouge them and everything else. And like, you know. A lot of angst, a lot of angst between us. Um, yeah, and so now you just end up an amazing weekend, wrap up this uh, with some campers and some name. A Euro guy came, Mr. Jose Fernandez, actually, yeah, and some other funny. like Sean Palmer and all those legends. So what's the deal? For 13 oh, yeah. year, 39 years, you've been keeping the flame. I'm just trying to keep, you know, what Tom started going out of here. You know the stoke and the love and the, you know and, and just showing that we're still a family you know we're not we haven't sold out you know at least most of us haven't sold out but uh you know it's great i just you know i wanted to throw down the old school style and, and uh you know the reunion or everybody gets together and it's just it's been three years since the last one and everybody was so happy to get back together again and you know and then now we're working on the 40th for next year which is going to be a really big deal yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there, and I'm going to bring all the Frenchie on board. Uh, I'm just looking for uh, my Sean Palmer, uh, Mini Palmer. I know Sean was there, but um, I, I believe it or not, I, I, my mom sold all my boards. Anyway, um, so the concept of the, the tribute, uh, it's to uh, show up with a whole board, of course. And uh, w what's the deal? You have to show up with the vintage board. Yeah, the, 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 the cutoff is pre-90, the old hole pattern. Uh, if you went to the four-hole pattern, that's not a legendary board, at least not yet. But anything pre-90, pre which had like, you know, 20, 30 holes for, you know, different uh, mounting patterns and stuff with the old bindings. But right now, we don't really care about the bindings. If the board has to be pre-90, you can have adapters or new bindings or whatever on the board as long as the board is is vintage you know pre-90 oh pre-90 so before 1999 uh, 1990 correct yeah that's that's when the first four hole pattern started showing up with 90 so oh, all right so I'm, I'm i'm disqualified right away with my shin palmer from 1992 dude i have to go <laughs> a little bit earlier and go grab, grab one more dude, my first you gotta go Oh yeah! All right, then I'll, I'll take the switchblade, uh, freestyle switchblade. I saw uh, Todd Richards. I have it right there. Look at this. Uh, I have a clip of Todd, I believe. So this is it. This is the half pipe. The half pipe is full. Just shape like that, guys. Just the machine to shoot two walls. Riders will come with shovels and just do their kicks and hits. This Todd Richards used to be world champion, and he's riding a. I don't know what he was riding. Probably a, sw a Sims, no? Yeah, he was riding an old Sims. Yeah, those guys, uh, between Delaney, Todd Richards, and... Uh, what was it? Actually, the funny part was seeing Tom Burke riding a, a, a 
900 FE. Oh. Right? And, that, <laughs> and then I totally, I totally spaced on it because he rode for Tom for a little bit. Oh, and yeah. He jumped to Avalanche. And then I was like, what? Oh, I totally forgot. Ah, he did, you know. So now we got, we actually have video proof that he rode Sims. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that that that's funny. That that is so funny. And Mr. Sean Palmer was there, and a, a, a yeah. big deal. I mean, he's from Tao, correct? Oh yeah, yeah he lives over in, over on the other side of Reno now. It's about an hour away from Donner. But he'll be back next year. He's gonna dig out. He's gonna dig in his archives and bring out a couple of boards, a race board and a uh, a pipe board for next year. Tune them up. So I'm like, you better. You better be here with all that stuff. We're gonna we're gonna test you, boy. <laughs> and 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 then because on those boards we just talk. I mean, the we just saw Todd Richards. It's not easy to write these boards now. The stance before knowing that Shen White has probably close to six, up to sixty five centimeters between each feet. Uh, back then, if we were having forty two uh, stance, it was like a big deal. So writing those yeah. small stance and trying to land and also the bindings. I mean, dude. Such a pain in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you know that's the thing with our event. Just, uh, after two days, everybody's got really painful ankles, arches, knees, butts, elbows, wrists. Do you provide a Cairo you know, after what? session? Yeah, just well, I think I think next year we're gonna we're gonna supply a a, a crew of, of masseuses and and uh, you know and prep people you know for you know. Maybe put a couple hot tubs out there on the deck for people to soak in while they're washing the pipe or after the pipe, you know, and have some, uh, you know, some some uh, some bar babes, you know, sh shoving some drinks down them. That's cool. We're gonna take a break for three minutes, and we're gonna watch a tribute to one of the legacy you just had, and we're gonna ask you, how is Mr. Sean Palmer? Let's watch Mr. Sean Palmer in his heart. Started as the world's greatest athlete. And as an irreverent, irrepressible, and irresistible force in virtually every action sport he pursued. But Sean's induction tonight is for his game-changing impact in snowboarding's formative years, when the original bad boy was a half-pipe and border cross world champion who inspired tens of thousands to follow in his wake. Tom Shea, the editor of the world's first snowboarding magazine, put it this way. Sean Palmer alone embodied the heart and soul of snowboarding. Growing up in Lake Tahoe with his single parent mom and grandmother, Palmer built his own board at age 12 and quickly taught himself the sport. By age 15, he had dropped out of school to pursue a professional career. And in 1986, he casually showed up in a Santa Claus outfit to win the famed Mount Baker Bank Slalom. In 1990, he beat legendary pipe rider Craig Kelly to win the Swatch World Halfpipe Championship. Five years later, he founded Palmer Snowboards, and his total domination of the new snowboard cross-discipline would cement the brand's reputation and his own. Palmer would win three consecutive Winter X Games gold medals in border cross from 1997 to 1999. And then, in another head-turning display of versatility, he would switch over to ski across the next season and win Winter X Games gold again. I keep coming off the couch and there's no competition no more. A six-time X Games gold medalist, he was the poster boy and go-to guy for ESPN in the network's promotion of the Winter X Games and in the new world of extreme. Palmer's hard partying lifestyle caught up with him in 2005 when he was hospitalized for a near fatal drug and alcohol overdose. But he soon mounted a legendary comeback and became a valued member and elder statesman with the U.S. snowboard team, collecting silver medals in World Cup events in 2006 and 2008. After qualifying for the 2006 Olympic border cross event, where he had a legitimate shot at a gold medal, Palmer was sidelined by a torn Achilles tendon. And then at age 41, narrowly missed a spot on the 2010 Vancouver Olympic roster. Heavily tatted in the ink that usually had a Cadillac theme and outrageously entertaining, Palmer made it clear that snowboarding was a lifestyle first 
and nobody could match his unique combination of natural athletic ability, game day performance, and showmanship. Arriving at events in one of his tricked out big fin vintage Cadillac sedans, sporting plaid snowboard pants and a clown hairdo, Palmer would don a shiny sequined outfit usually sewn by his mom, to accept the winner's trophy. He was the lead singer of a punk band called Fungus in the 1990s. And with PlayStation, launched an extremely successful video game, Sean Palmer's Pro Snowboard. As the third snowboarder to earn his own pro model board, Palmer would sign numerous lucrative sponsorship deals in snowboarding, mountain biking, and motocross during his career. Palmer's accomplishments beyond snowboarding are difficult to fathom. As the ultimate multitasker, he seemed able to pick up any sport and immediately compete at a world-class level, though he usually followed a diligent training regime behind the scenes. He was a silver medalist in downhill at the 1996 World Mountain Bike Championships and the Winter X Games gold medalist in snow mountain bike racing in 1997. He raced cars and was also a professional motocross racer. In 2012, freestyle pioneer Brad Holmes produced a documentary on his longtime friend Palmer, calling it The Miserable Champion. One Palmer tribute from the film says it all. No one could keep up with it. For his world titles in half pipe and border cross to his overwhelming impact on snowboard culture and the entire action sports landscape, Sean Palmer is welcomed into the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame. Here we go, and just like that, by magic, we got Mike Chantry fixing the problem live from Tao in his garage. Mike, oh. welcome, finally, we did it. Thank you, Sean Palmer, for uh, just letting us fix the problem. How are you, buddy? It's the magic of Palmer, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hang up here because I'm going to have you wait, on. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Hang That's on. better. Let me, let me make sure I got audio here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at this. is the real deal. Mike Chantry for you. Okay. Snowboard pioneer in his garage. And look at that. You have probably a thousand boards back there. Uh, I'm so happy we fixed the problem. I mean, thank you so much, Sean Palmer. It took us three minutes to fix this. <laughs> and everyone is showing up. Eric Vero Laroche, hello de garage. My English is very poor. That's fine. On va parler un petit peu en français si tu veux. Mike Chantry, c'est une des légendes, un des snowboard pionniers de l'histoire du snowboard, un des plus grands archivistes euh, d'images de, de, de snowboard. Il a rencontré Tom Sims et c'est de ça qu'on va parler. Vous parlez français, monsieur Mike Chantry, do you speak French a little bit? <laughs> um, <okay. laughs> That is so awesome. I'm so happy to see you. I've been following you for so many years right now. I suck. I should have been there with you guys this weekend, but I just learned a few wow. minutes ago, I would have been kicked out of the pipe, me finding my baby Sean Palmer. I need to freaking get the switchblade. <laughs> uh, well, we would have had you as a guest poacher. You know, always right. Like, that. like right. the last right. time, right after the last Olympics, when we, when we had the last event, and we had Danny Davis and Mark McMorris. We're here, those, the Olympians. Those are big names. And they were poaching. I said, oh, guest poachers, Olympic poachers. And they were riding the old Burton stuff and having a ball. They were laughing and giggling all the way up and down the pipe. So it was funny. So, uh, look, this is what you did previous this weekend. This is yeah. now we're talking about an Olympic sports with like 22 feet and huge switch. I mean, huge blade on a machine, super pipe and blah, blah, blah. And look at that. This is our Mike and his uh, machinist just pull out the half pipe. That was it. You just freaking push the snow for the backside wall and the front side wall, and here it is. <laughs> yeah, it's about three hours of cat work, and the rest is all shovels. Okay, look at this. Kada Farik, salut, Franck, ça va? Bonjour, bonjour. Can you say bonjour? Uh, bonjour. Say bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. Ça va, ça va. <laughs> so, you guys, voilà, vous êtes en live avec Mike Chantry, une des légendes pionniers du snowboard. Il a découvert toute l'histoire avec Tom Sims. Uh, ça fait maintenant plus de 39 ans 
qui tient la flamme du premier contest de snowboard half pipe qui a lieu du côté de Soda Spring, qui a bougé maintenant à Donnerski Ranch. Et on va parler de tout ça, évidemment. On vient de parler de Sean Palmer. On a parlé, évidemment, euh, de, de Craig Kelly. Um, I mean, this is, Craig Kelly was another big name. Uh, yeah. and, I mean, with Terry Kidwell, they're probably the two godfather of like uh, freestyle snowboarding, if I'm yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. They they got to meet Tom the the second time he came up, um, and they were riding winter sticks and breaking like one a week. So Tom goes, "Well, you need to ride these boards. These don't break like the winter sticks." <laughs> he gave them, them some FEs, and then they went over there. And well, Alan Armbruster is the master of disaster of breaking anything. If you say it's unbreakable, he'll break it. And he did. He broke a lot of my boards, which I hate. You know, I wanted to kill him a couple times. But I introduced those guys. Uh, and then they were kind of hesitant about showing Tom the pipe, where the pipe was. So it's just, you know. Oh, look at that. We have another legend showing up in the garage. Réjeanne Lacoste, the crocodile. Hello, bonjour. <laughs> the real deal. Bonjour, ma Réjeanne. Uh, hey. um, Mike. Pull up the, the camera a little bit, till it down like this. We can so you, see you more because I see your forehead a little bit. Yeah, yeah, here we go. A little bit more again. And that we're going to be perfect. That's it. Now we're all set. Uh, des gros bisous, Marie-Jeanne. On t'embrasse très, très fort de la part du garage et une pensée pour notre ami Franz qui nous a quitté. Voilà. We uh, just lost a dear friend. This is life. Uh, uh, Mike. Uh, We're talking about Mr. Craig Kelly. Uh, I mean, I have something to show you. Look at this. Let's keep the guy alive. Oh, he didn't come up with every first air. No, he didn't come up with everything. He just made it look better. Craig's unique and natural style is now making him a media superstar. One-on-one -on, -one on a fresh powder day, you wouldn't know it. All you needed to be Craig's friend was to share his passion for the ride, and he would always push you to ride better. What a legend, Mr. Craig Kelly. The voiceover just said he just made snowboarding look great. That's it. Oh, yeah, he just... He idolized Terry and, and Palmer, you know, when he was first starting. And then he was an amateur. And then in 85, he turned pro. Tom got him on the team, signed him on. And then his first pro contest was the uh, Sierra Cup up here, right before the 85 Worlds. And that's when he jumped uh, jumped on, on Tom's team. And, uh, you know, and the rest is kind of like, well, there's history right there. You know, and you wow. can see the, you can see the style. You know, he just he rode like a geek the first time I saw him. I was like, who the hell is this guy? You know, and then I saw him later on, and I was like, wow, that's a big difference. You know, he's really picking it up. And you could see you could see what was going to come. You know, just from the way he was riding. And I was like, well, there's another one going to be a, you know a superstar down the road. You know. Well, look, I have I have a superstar just showing up in the garage. I don't know if you remember his name. Now he stops snowboarding. Like he, he's. Is the kite master right now, but Guillaume Chestagnol is a French guy who Guillaume. Yeah, you know him because you were the oh, judge. Yeah. You, you oh, were yeah. the judge at the X game <laughs> when he made a silver. It was impossible for him to grab gold because he's not American. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Salut mon Guillaume. Guillaume, if you want to show up, um, I'm gonna send you the link right now. If you want to show up in the garage and say hi to Mike and talk about those good old days. Uh, please join. Um, so talking back to uh, Craig Kelly, uh, I mean, that must have been devastating. You just said that Craig was writing for Sims, but then Jake jumped on and Craig became the Burton icon. How was the deal? Oh, that was um, Tom just couldn't come up with the money, you know, to support you know, the, the, the team that he wanted, you know, to, uh, for the travel and everything else. And Jake had the money. So he got together with Craig and go, Hey, I can support you this way and give you this much. And, you know, um, uh, you know, whatever you need, you know, it's yours. 
So Craig just went, okay, and he just jumped. And then we had the, the black bottom mystery boards for a while. And then there was like this argument back and forth between Tom and, and Jake, you know, and then it went, went to court and back and forth in court. And then, and it was, you know, kind of. You, you were part of that, of that lifetime. I mean, the big rivalry, uh, I know there was so much respect. We started this live with that picture. I don't know if you saw it. I'm just going to show it right now. Uh, for a second, uh, here we go. Uh, the, that picture of uh, uh, Jake. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's the only picture I think. I think Bud Fawcett has one other picture of them together smiling. So I think there's only two pictures ever of those two guys well, smiling. Because the, beside the rivalry of the money of the brand, it was the rivalry of like big, huge East Coast guy and West Coast guy. I mean, yeah. Tom was the Californian kid uh, and Jake was the guy. Um, like, yeah, the, I, I, I'm not, it's not embarrassing to say that, but he had the money and Tom was, didn't have the box. And Tom was already freaking out with the Paul Perata guys and said, please put a sim snowboard on all the freaking skaters you meet because if these guys start a snowboard company, Please tell them we don't make money with snowboards, but give them sim snowboard. That was the rule number one for all the rap. <laughs> he, he gave out more boards than anybody back then. It was like, oh, you want to ride here? Take this, go ride, you know. Or he'd see somebody coming down on a board that wasn't, you know, coming down the hill, and he's like, oh, what board are they on? Oh, here, you got to ride this one. And he, you know, give an FE or when Terry's model came out, he'd give him a Kidwell and go, here, you, you're gonna love this. Go ride it, you know. Now both of them passed away, and he never ended up there. They must be smiling and laughing at the whole deal. Like, dude, look what! what I hope they're riding doing. together. <laughs> I really yes, do. they are riding in heaven for sure. I mean, yeah. I'm a Sims guy, so I'm very comfortable to talk about this. But um, I, 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 I must pay also a tribute to Jake Burton for everything he did. Um, it's still amazing. Burton snowboard was at like almost 10 years in advance in all the technology and that must be pissing off uh tom who was like a more artisanal guy working in his garage actually yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, tom tom had a head head for the design and everything but you know I, he just never had the luck of the you know interacting with people that could you know bankroll him or support him or jump in you know and he wanted to control you know the whole thing which is you know I, I understand that but he just didn't want to give away anything but you know he could never he could never draw the you know the finance that he needed to really go big you know really big big time you know like jake did jake had the connections and the money and everything and you know and then he went to europe and manufactured over there and you know in austria and every places in italy and you know tom got did that a little bit but he just couldn't do it on the scale that jake could you know i love both those guys you know i was always friends with both of them you know i just there was no angst or anything you know and i was always the mediator at a contest back in the day you know i'd see them going for each other and i'd jump in the middle and go hey hey, hey wait a minute okay you, you know <laughs> let's, let's let's slow down you know before everybody you know goes off and on a tear <laughs> well the, the rivalry was real but um yeah it must have been devastating back then to lose uh craig kelly knowing what craig kelly did but he got sean palmer and sean palmer was um yeah it was the, the it was a the kind of a bad guy he was a punk he was more than a rock star like i mean sean white kind of embraced this but not with the bad guy but like being a rock star and embracing snowboarding yeah. and bring snowboarding to the next level and not just be known by results or stuff like that but yeah sean palmer was a big time sims guy and then he created palmer i guess another cry for uh tom at that time when he lost sean yeah <laughs> You know, it's just he couldn't couldn't hold on to him because he just didn't have the money to back him. You know, Sean found found financing and went, OK, let's go here and did his own brand. You know, and we look, just what I, look what I found. I found this preparing the show. Uh, I mean, you are one of the biggest archivists in the world uh, for touring with ISF the one and only snowboard federation i would say i would call it yeah. you were with jose uh this weekend one of the yeah. creator and um i found this look we're gonna go straight to austria right now world championship yeah. with craig kelly and his magic of the air 
Look at the pipe. That's what you just built. Yeah, and really back then, the loot he made was like, wow. Now it looks like it could be ridiculous for any kid who's 14 years old and said, dude, this is this is not. Look at that. Pamphlet. D tier. You almost look got at the, disqualified. Look at the stats. <laughs> you almost got disqualified there. Oh, say that again. He almost got disqualified at that contest. Oh, really? Because back in the day, before they dropped the inverted rule, they had that that thing because of insurance and everything, because of the U.S. and other countries and stuff, they had an inverted rule. So if you went upside down inverted, you know, like if you went a crippler, you had to have a touch, a hand touch, on the wall before your board touched. If not, you were disqualified. You know why? Huh? Do you know why? Why what? Why you couldn't do the head upside down? No, it's because of the stupid American rules of insurance and shit. In Europe, it was it was legal. <laughs> Japan was legal. Canada was legal. Anywhere else in the freaking world was legal, except here in the USA. You know. Oh my just, gosh. Was, you know, well, also this was because <laughs> back then uh, it was to stop the youngster being too crazy and kick off the whole guys from the first generation who could not do upside down <laughs> so judges were like let's protect these guys <laughs> yeah, a little bit you know but it, well it was, no I'm, I'm just joking i'm just no, i know it. i know it just, it was just you know the, the real thing was with the lawyers and the, the u.s court system and the, you know legalities and all that stuff this is like oh we can't do that so they made it illegal worldwide for the whole association any event and then we kept, you know, me and some of the other judges and stuff were like, no, 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 we got to change this. So finally, things started changing in, you know, in the U.S. where it became, okay, it's, it's, it, it passed a few, you know, tests and stuff. And they went, okay, we can do it. And the next year, everybody went crazy. They were doing, you know, cripplers and double cripplers and 720s. And everybody was getting off the wall and getting upside down and getting all crazy. And it was like, well, that's the start of the cork movement. So somebody in the chat asking me, uh, how does it work for 39 years, keeping the flame up from first snowboard outpipe uh, contest have been done in Soda Springs. So you just ended up the amazing weekend. You were in No More Soda Spring, but you moved to Donor Ski Ranch. Yeah. We were having political battles with the Ski Corp over our last, the last time we did the event over there. So I just didn't want to have to deal with that anymore. Donner's always been open to us and let us do whatever the hell we want in any way we want. You know, it's just, as long as we don't burn the lodge to the ground, we're okay. So, but Donner was kind of like a birthplace to us. Uh, Norm Saylor, the, the, the past owner, he would pretty much let us, you know, just go crazy anywhere. But you just didn't want to piss him off or you'd be banned forever for life. But we always we always had a home there, you know. Soda was fine for the first, you know, three years that we did it, and then Tom sold the rights to Breckenridge, and then it went, you know, off and you know, down the road. But Donner always had we had the ra the original raging at the ranch events back in the '80s, and I just figured, well, it's time to bring the raging back to the ranch, you know. That's what I do with the shirts, you know. It's like the raging returns, and here we are. So what do you need? You need to get your board from earlier, uh, before 1990, correct? Yeah, pre-90 with the old hole pattern, no four, no four pin pattern. All so, right. And and then you can enter the contest. You don't need to be a snowball legend. You just need to freaking grab the pioneer board. Yeah. Well, it's, it's part of the deal is, is we have our legends and we have our wannabe legends. So that you, you know, come in. So it's as long as you got the old board and the clothing and everything else, you're cool. Oh my so, gosh. You know, I, I am, I, I'm not going to run, but I have my Oakley's from 1999 uh, <laughs> that Terry was wearing uh, when he first won the US Open. That's yeah. another legend right there. Is Terry ever come? I keep asking him, but he's always busy right around then because he, he had the Arctic Challenge that he was running for so many years. And it was always right around the time our event was. And I'm like, oh man, we, you know, Come and be a guest poacher. Just show up and jump in the pipe. We want to see what you can do on the old crappy stuff, you know. <laughs> well, now he's a daddy with a full house and he's busy. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we just bring the kids. Everybody. Roach has got his kids, you know. And it's just Jimmy Scott was there with his son, teaching him how to snowboard. And he actually did really good too. So, okay. Who won this year? It was. Uh, oh shoot! I'm brain. Sorry, I got a brain fart. Because well, um, <laughs> last, well, last year was maybe? Todd Richards, and this year was um, 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 
That's okay. You're fine. Yeah. Anyway, but uh, Christy Elder, she rules the women's division. Tina Bassage is right up there with her. And Heather Mills, another old Sims rider, you know. The, the, from yeah, I saw Tina with a switchblade actually. For um, yeah. she found out that she was riding my kid well in the, in the race. I, yes. she goes, Can I borrow your board? And she wanted to do that one in the race. And then I'm, I saw her in the pipe and I'm like, Where's my board? She goes, Oh, I loaned it to Heather because she needed a board. I'm like, Whatever. <laughs> Tina uh, was in the garage what? with her brother uh, two weeks ago. Look. Actually, uh, we have this. This is your angle camera. This is what's happening. You have the chairlift. Perfect situation. The chairlift just dropped you at the top of the pipe. And this is the micro pipe. You don't want to do anything else than that. This is back in the yeah early 80s. Yeah. Now we built a kicker on each wall. Drop in at the top. You can do a you know, cool dip air. Guys. Dropping in, and you could see him too. Some guys were doing some good airs, and then there was a gap jump on the right hand wall looking up about halfway down. N nobody broke anything, nope, no injuries this year. You know, some sore, everybody was sore as hell, but you know, all smiling. So, look what I have for you this is this is me, 1988, uh, in Lazor. <laughs> Look at the pipe. I don't know if you can see. It's the same yeah. shape and uh, was ridiculous. Jean-Philippe Garcia, do you know that guy? Yeah, sounds familiar. Uh, well, he's one of the very first uh, pioneer of freestyle for us, and he used to ride for Tom Burton, um, yeah. uh, Jake Burton, sorry. And yeah. see, I, ma I made a mix. Never do a mix. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, Jean-Philippe was so tall that he could touch the, both of the copying like this with both hands. And at the end of the pipe, they used to do like a like a, a, a jump for the final jump. Uh -huh. I mean, those were the days. Now there is like huge monster pipe. Did you watch the Olympics, Mike? Yeah, I watched some of it, and then you know, just watching the the uh, the screw up over the Japanese score. You know, the scoring and everything. <laughs> I was kind of upset over that. And yes. Todd Richards just went after after the judges on that. We were like four dot four feet up the cupping. Yeah, this freaking Japanese kid killed the stole the show. I mean, oh, yeah. that was the insane. second run. The second run was the winning run right there, and they scored him down. How? What? How low? Yeah. Jesus, well, that's been mine you know, live on, that, on, on NBC for sure. You know, uh, what do you think snowboarding became now? It's very. I mean. What, what, do you, what do you think? I'm not going to give you any input. <laughs> no, I just I'm 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 old school. I like the style, you know, over the tech, you know, instead of throwing a 1800 or a 2460 or something. I go, these kids have been playing too many video games, and that's where a lot of this came from. Is a lot of the video games, the snowboard games, because I know I did the same thing where I could do like a, a 3960 or whatever, you know triple triple quad cork maneuver in the pipe you know and it's just like you can't even, you can't even count anymore no, it's just like you can't go high enough you can't count high enough on the amount of rotations and corks and everything different access you know all three accesses back and forth and and it's just you know and some of that's my fault because i got that into the, some of the games back then i was like oh we need to be able to do this we want to do that and then now they just went overboard with it you know, it's like Tony Hawk and then the Sean White game and a couple of the other games. And it's just like, oh, well, let's see, how far can we go? You know, and I was like, OK. And then the kids are playing these and going, they're looking at it. And they're going, this is doable. This is doable. I'm like, OK, good luck. You know, it's your neck, kid. <laughs> you know, you want to go for 29 or, you know, 36 40s or whatever. You know, if you can pull it, more luck to you. But I still like the style, I like Danny Davis. You know, and a lot of oh, he's the master of style. He's he's, yeah, but... he's keeping he's keeping snowboarding alive. Thank God. Yeah, you know, uh, it's Mike. Just... Um, behind you, there is a screen with like some footage of like skateboarding because we're talking a lot about snowboarding today. But you also attached to skateboarding. What oh, that's that? the ramp in the back. Yeah, sorry. Was that was that was that, that your was ramp? Mile high. That was my ramp, mile high. We used to ride it. We used to shovel it out and skate it in the winter. You had a ramp in your backyard, such a vert ramp. Yeah, it was uh, 10 foot high, 16 feet wide, eight foot transitions. You could skate out the back door and drop in the ramp. So look, if you wonder what Mike Chantry was back then, this is him in the PAL. See? Oh, that's from my Who's Hot article. In his Homewood <laughs> area, Lake Tahoe, 
actually 1988, right there. Yeah, that was home. Were, were you writing a Sims? Of course you yeah, did. Yeah, that was a Kidwell. Yeah, Terry Kidwell. He showed up because the garage was born because of COVID. It, Terry Kidwell showed up in the garage. I lost my mind. I was like, what the <laughs> hell? And he was like, hey, kids. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> and this is you, Mike. Uh, you yep. like sandboarding as well. Yeah, that was over in Nevada, Sand Mountain. That was a, that was fun times too. Yeah, Palmer was lighting fireworks off the off the yeah. That's it. So I'm disqualified. I'm sad. I'm, I'm gonna stop looking for my baby Palmer. I need to go way, way, way deeper you into the archives. Deeper in your archives back there. Buddy. Oh, oh no! Look, uh, what about that guy? Would, would I be qualified if I take that? Oh, pfft, that's fully, you know, without this, a doubt. This, this, I win. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, we just uh, one year we had a a bindingless uh, division, and it was Chuck and Tom. Uh, what was it? Chuck, Tom, and it was Jeff Grell and a few others with the with the ropes, the leashes on the nose that came down and they raced, and it was it was awesome to see. Well, you used to you used to do the a uh, uh, giants, no? Huh? You used to do a, a also a, the the slalom giant. Yeah, it depends on on you know. One year we'll do slalom. Uh, the one year we did a dual slalom. Another year we did a, a super GS. You know, from the top of the ridge all the way down and around the corner, down below the pipe. That was awesome. So it depends on snow conditions and you know how how much how much bee netting and everything else we can find and who we can get to put it up. <clears throat> Whether you know what we're going to do, so the snow conditions, we couldn't do a really long course because there was a lot of dirt patches coming through because of the drought out here, and uh, so we just said, well, we'll just do a you know a single slalom and everybody go twice, best best time wins, and you know, and I was so thankful that you know Mark Fawcett showed up to to help bail us out on the course, you know, because my race guy got injured and he was hobbling around, and Mark showed up and goes, I can jump in there and help him, like. You have the calm, buddy. Go do it. You know, we had an awesome race. He said a good, really good tech course. Uh, uh, Guillaume Chastagnol in the in the back channel is telling me he's a he's a dad again for the second time with a young baby, which is like a, probably three four months old. He said, "Please say hi to Mike, and please ask him why he didn't grab the freaking gold medal at the X game." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you! That wasn't. That wasn't that wasn't me. I just got overruled. So yeah, uh, I'm sorry, man. You just you rocked you rocked that pipe session. You go, Guillaume. See, 2022, you got the gold medal. Come here. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, come well, on. He was, he was really Yo, upset. Come, come ride next year and get a real gold medal. He never, he never showed up anymore to X game. He said, "You know what? Forget it. <laughs> I am French, and I'll still be French." <laughs> Oh, yeah. But at the time, Guillaume was one of the beasts of uh, freestyle half pipe with no helmet, sending uh, like the back and uh, uh, back and forth, like a uh, back to back 1080. And we're talking about like 2000, I mean, 1999, maybe 2000. I can't remember. Anyway, Guillaume, if you have the memory, refresh myself. I'm brainwashed to have a brain fart too. Anyway, oh, yeah. so 39 years anniversary next year, getting ready for 40. It's going to be insane are you thinking of what oh uh, just all the people that have been hating themselves because they missed this one and then you know i'm just sending out invites already for next year i go the dates will be in a few weeks as soon as i get get the word from paul at the longboard classic about when their next one's going to be i always like to try to be two weeks ahead of him so that way everybody can come over here and have two weeks to you know to get over jet lag and everything else in the partying and the whole thing when they go back to you know his event so it's just you know we're the we're the two big deals I guess globally. One so, on one somebody side. Somebody asking somebody asking on the chat on the back channel. Uh, did you stop the contest for two years because of COVID? Is it thirty nine years? Uh, uh, well, is COVID in, included? The, the last one it was in twenty. The last one we did was in twenty eighteen. I was going through chemo. Yes, I know that. And I you know I collapsed after that. And I Dude, couldn't. look at this, Mike. <laughs> You freaking kicked that out. <laughs> I know CBD saved my life, so but it was just how, are you, how are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm fine, I'm just I'm still got a balance problem which affects my riding. I'm working on that little by little, so 
Hopefully you, next you, year I'll be able you, to you actually. Got, you got hit by cancer in uh, 2018, correct? Yeah. Well, I was diagnosed in 2017, and then went through chemo and stuff, and then I, I came back on my event, and I got home, and I collapsed after I got home. I wound up in the ER, and they said that I had died twice. So I just told them no more chemo. I want to do CBD now, and and it cured me. It cured, you know, cured everything that was, you know, they said it was, you know, dead tissue. It came back, the whole thing, everything healed up. And I was just like, oh, so thankful. You are a master Jedi, my brother. This is it. And this is hope because uh, you're not the only one struggling with that shit. Every day we hear this when you get older. So yeah. thank God. And I mean, this is amazing. And uh, yep. Yeah, I just, wish that life Noah, twice. I just wish Noah would have got, you know, sooner, you know, on the CBD. But it just, you know, I was looking like he was when he passed and I was down to 112 pounds. Yeah. You know, what, what, all... uh, um, Tom was struggling with um, his cancer as well, right? Sims? Uh, yeah, Tom Sims. No, no, no. He, he, was, he had a heart problem. Our problem? Oh, yeah, yeah. He, had, he, had, uh, he had a minor's minor heart attack, and then later on, the the last one was a major, and and they couldn't save him. So, but that was you know, and I had been discussing the 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 uh, the thirty year anniversary in, in 2012. We were discussing the 2013 contest, you know, and I go, we got to do something. It's the thirty year anniversary of the first pipe we ever did, and the whole thing at you know at Soda Springs. So, you know, then I talked with Hill after he passed, I talked with Hillary and, and everybody at Sims and I was like, Hey, we got to do something. So we did, we just had a huge celebration and a, you know, celebrate his lifestyle and Stoke and, and his legacy and the whole thing. And, and pretty much the whole Sims team showed up, you know, for that. Do you, do you do that on your own? Because I know you've been the, the snowboard event supervisor back then, but do you do that on your own or you have like a staff and like big, huge sponsors and whatever, or it's just like the family. It's just, it's just been me funding it every year. <laughs> so, you know, whatever money we make from the entries and stuff goes into the prize purse for the, for the legends, legends guys. And then whatever's left over to try and cover my costs. You know, wait, 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 you win money. Yeah. The legends do. Oh my gosh. It's what is the paycheck? <laughs> 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 yeah, well, it won't pay for your for your airline ticket, but oh shoot! You know. Well, I, 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 I'm in I, I'm in Carlsbad, California, so it's not going to be that far. <laughs> but um, we have a lot of French guy asking question. Hey, 40th anniversary, Thompson's big deal. We want to show up. So what what beside their airfare and everything, what would be the cost? Um, what is the accommodation? Well, it's uh, oops, what happened? I just lost you. No, you are here? Okay, wait a minute. Okay, are we back. You, you just froze. Yeah, yeah, you're back. Don't worry. Oh wait a minute, I just lost. No, you're you're here. That's okay. You can talk. Oh. We can hear you. Uh, so what? Oops, uh, he left for a second. So we were with Mike Chantry talking about the 39th anniversary of the snowboard reunion legend. Um, Hervé Berco, pas dispo ce soir. Bah écoute, c'est pas grave. Hein. Tu vas regarder le replay comme tout le monde. Euh, on a eu des problèmes pour lancer ce live, ce pédale de garage avec Mike Chantry, qui est une. Je parle en français comme je vais faire un petit récap. Euh, qui est un des snowboard pionniers de l'histoire du snowboard en début des allez milieu des années 70. Il a rencontré très vite euh, un certain euh, Tom Sims. Euh, à l'époque, euh, Mike travaillait pour une compagnie de téléphonie et euh, tombé fou amoureux du snowboard. Il a balancé tout son oseille là-dedans, il a construit une rampe derrière chez lui. Donc, il a eu toutes les légendes du skateboard qui ont débarqué chez lui, euh, en passant par Mike McGill, en passant par euh, Steve Caballero. Et puis, bah, très vite, le snowboard l'a percuté, il a quitté son job, il a embrassé une carrière de juge international à, au sein de l'ISF et euh, des X Games. Et puis, bah, le reste, is history. We lost Mike for a second, he's going to come back in a few minutes. Euh, ce que je propose, c'est bah, qu'on re-regarde ce qu'on vient de voir, à savoir un reportage sur M. Tom Zeps. With the sound of the better. And revered as one of the most influential figures of snowboarding in the early stages of the sport. Including exposing millions to snowboarding yeah, when he well, served you were as a waiting, stunt double I, I for Roger was, Moore this, 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 this in the again. 1985 this, James Bond him. film uh, A I'm View to Kill, the, the, where he shredded glaciers, dodged gunfire. You know this guy more than anybody. Look at this. This is the, um, he was the stunt double for James Bond. I mean, that's a yeah. big deal. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know which James Bond that was. Uh, anyway. And yes. That was View to Kill. Yes, View to Kill. And look at this. This is one of the first snowboard. It was a plank of wood. <laughs> This is priceless. Of course, California, Santa Barbara is home. That is on the boards. Oh my gosh. Look at this a skateboard longboard. It's insane. And Sims, his name, Legacy, made that logo all around the world with legends such as Terry Kidwell, Sean Palmer, you name them all. And we just said that Craig Kelly was actually writing for Sims, uh, Tom Sims, before Jake jumped on. With a big paycheck. Look at that. Vision Streetwear. Do you remember that? Yeah, that's when uh, Dorfman got the license from Tom and started making the boards and took control of Sims uh, Snow and Skateboards. Oh, my gosh. At that time, it was the big time of double grab, uh, but both ends with the back end and everything. Look at this huge Sims family. This is insane. <laughs> So those are the boards you need. Look at this. This is like probably early 90s with Sean Palmer. And yeah, uh, when we say new school, new school was never new school. New school was already born. <laughs> this was, we, we were preschool. Yeah, exactly. Look at that board with, oh, you know the legend I can try to bring? Uh, do you remember uh, Regis Roland? Who? Regis Roland. Uh, um, oh, Regis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know Regis. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he's been killing it with um, a snowboard, apocalypse, and everything. Yeah. Now he's out of business. Who was, oh, I can't think of. Who was the crazy French guy that rode for, for Wild Duck? Crazy French guy for Wild Duck? Was Jimmy Peso, maybe? No, no, no. This is back in the 80s. And... Uh, crazy French guy who was riding for Wild Duck. No, the one I remember was Swiss guy was uh, Jeff Cataneo for sure. It was a pipe oh, master. Oh, uh, Cataneo. Cataneo is from oh, Switzerland. Switzerland, okay, not okay, French. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's that's the only guy I can think of. He was the master yeah, pipe yeah. killer, uh, oh, yeah. Jean Francois Cataneo. Yes, with Alain yeah. Javé and all the Swiss guys. Yeah, his 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 humor was outrageous. Man. He, every time we'd get together, he had me in stitches the whole time. Well, Just, talking about that, do you remember uh, Quebec? Quebra Classic, one of the biggest snowboard contests ever. This is where we discovered for the very first time Terry Atkinson um, jumping on a wild duck board. Uh, no, Crazy Banana, way before it was 1988, probably, or yeah. 1987. Uh, Terry Atkinson showed up because his friend, um, Crazy Banana, Reto Lam, uh, gave yeah. him a board. And uh, then Jake saw that said, dude, come here right away. We're going to put a board yeah. under your feet, and this is it. <laughs> oh, and he showed up, at, and Terrier showed up at Breckenridge, was it 1990, for the first time. He was like 15 years old, jumped into the pipe and everything. I got him in so much trouble. I, I apologize, Terrier, for getting you arrested and everything else, but <laughs> <laughs> dragged him by the sheriff and the cops and everything. But that was uh, that was a good time. It was amazing seeing you know him show up in the pipe and just going, wow, where's this kid going to go? What is no, the no, biggest no. legend you would like to see to show up next year for the four years anniversary? Come on, throw them names. Oh, God. Um, Max, Fabian, uh, Mickey Fru, Evelyn oh, Mickey, oh, Mickey Fru was the king of taking the hat off yeah. uh, during the backside there because at that time, judges yeah. were on the... Um, Judges were on the on the coping, not at the bottom, and they were in the middle of the pipe. And uh -huh. uh, Mickey was throwing the backside air to Faki, was taking off the hat, and I uh -huh. took that signature from him. I oh, mean, yeah. Mickey's, he's still uh -huh. he's still around. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, let's see, Evelyn, Evelyn, the body, Vladimir. Oh yeah. So I just I've been chatting with her, and she's like, "No, I can't make it." I'm like, "Oh, you gotta come over. We need more ladies." We need more ladies in the ladies division, you know. It's like there's three or four ladies, and that's it. And I want to pat them out a little more, get some more, you know, get some more ladies, legendary ladies here. And then, uh, you know, I'm trying to get Daniel Frank to come over, and um, Guy Dabini, Mario Dabini's there. He he couldn't make it this year, but he's been there the past couple times. And um, I think that's why Mark showed up because I figured, well, between 
uh, Super Mario and, and um, Delaney and a few of the other master racers. It's like, Mark, we got a race for you now, man. We got some racers, you know, come on and, you know, jump in the club. So then he showed up and the other guys had to bail. So it's like, okay, well, you get to run the course. So the next year, I think we'll have we'll have a good division of racers going to show up. I'm like, nah, we'll see what happens. All right. Mike, it's been an hour already. It's been amazing. I cannot wait. So next year, what? It's going to be the same weekend, March? Well, I, as soon as I as soon as I hear from Paul on his date, then we'll we'll know. So it'll be in about <clears throat> three, four weeks, I'll know what the dates will be for next year. So everybody can put it on their calendar, get their travel arrangements all ready, and show up, you know? Showed up. And Showed then up. Uh, what is the accommodation? Everyone stay at the same place? Is, is there a, There's a... Uh, my favorite place is the Donner Lake Village, which is five minutes down the mountain, or it's down the down the road from from Donner. So it's right on the lake. It's you know a good place. I put a uh, I put uh, Jose and, and Ollie and all those guys up in that place there too. So they had a good time. And is there an, a, any entry fee? Uh, it's uh, right now it's a hundred dollars for for both events. If you want to go for the overall. Or fifty dollars each. You know, if you want to just race, it's fifty. If you want to do the the pipe, it's fifty. But we'll see what you know. We'll see what happens. And this give you a ski pass? Uh, no, the pass is extra. But it's just we have a special rate, which is twenty five dollars for the with your bib. You get your bib, and you go down to the ticket office, and you can get your ticket for twenty five dollars. Oh, that's good is, because now is, she's ended at eighty bucks for just the day, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, Some places are one hundred and fifty dollars, and it's just like wow. That's insane. <laughs> All right. Mike, it was lovely to talk to you. Do you have boards back there? It's, it's in your garage. You have all your legends. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to do I was gonna do it, from the, you know, the cast from out there, and then I was having trouble. Oh, that's all right. Back. So That's just, all right. Because I was going to have all the boards lined up behind me, and I was yeah, like, Yeah, I know. Oh. This is what you did for the trailer. That was amazing. I mean, uh, maybe I'd buy one of those boards or I can rent one for next year because I'm going to have a problem to find a freaking... Now I'm sad. I thought I could have show up and just freaking pull out those backsiders from yeah. back then with a baby Palmer, but this is it. Forget yeah. it. I'm just going to go way deeper. And yeah. um, maybe a Burton Cruiser, 1999? Yeah. 89? Yeah. Yes. That works. <laughs> 89 works. 89 works. Anything 89 and older is, is you know, you're on, you're in. So, all right, Mike. Yeah. What what's your day look like now? Resting a little bit. Um, go out in my garden, do some weeding and stuff. I'm so far behind. It's been so dry and everything. I've been trying to water and get my iris to bloom, get my colors back here. And when it's blooming, it's like a Monet painting. All around oh, the yard with somebody, all. The... Somebody wants to know what happened to the vert ramp was in your backyard. Everyone cannot even believe it. <laughs> <laughs> That's now. I think there's still two mini ramps around around Tahoe that have parts of my old ramp in it. You know, once we had to tear it down, which was kind of sad because I had one more year that I wanted to do that contest. And I was going to expand it another 16 feet and bowl in. I was going to bowl one end in with put escalator down and escalator up from the bowl so it was like a new innovation for skate ramps so i was always innovating you know every time i you know every year we do the ramps contest or you know the first tear in tahoe and the second tear in tahoe and you know it's uh, you know like lance mountain with the flaming board and burned all the hair off his legs and you know and the, the dead cat toss and other stuff that went on there so i wanted to do one more year but the county would you know and everybody just like was in arms because the, the skateboarders really messed up the town i was like we're skateboarders. What do you think? What do you want? You know, the stickers everywhere. It was like any place you could put a sticker, there was stickers, you know? Yeah, that's so cool. So, anyway, it was great. It was a great Mike, time. you have 30 seconds to send an invitation to all because this is live is going to go in replay and replay and replay. For hey. all the French dude who loves snowboarding, the big old days. Here we go. 30 seconds promotion to invite everyone to which ski resort? Donner Ski Ranch again? Okay, yeah, Donner Ski Ranch. Okay, Here we go. Next Next year, 2023, is the 40th anniversary of the first snowboard halfpipe contest ever that Tom and I built back in 1983 at Soda Springs. But we're going to do it at Donner this time. If we need everybody there from the old days, show up, come down, hang out. It's a family reunion. We're all family. Come on, guys. I know you can go. Come on. Bring your you're board. So, Dig deep so in that good. archives. You're so good. 
Am yeah. I bring another legend? He's not really into the snowboard uh, legacy, but he loves snowboarding so much. His name is Laird Hamilton. He was one of our guests in Not the Garage, but Total Freestyle, the other show. And it's now playing the full um, 30 minutes documentary. We spent a full day at his home with Gabby Reese. And yeah. it's live now on uh, Riders TV. We're going to end up with that and stay tuned for more action on Riders TV. Thank you, Mike. Ciao. See you guys. It's been great. This. Peace. That's for the drinks. That's for you. That's for the drink. This or is Leon Hamilton. I was inspired young. I mean, I you know I lived at Pipeline, and I had all the best surfers in the world coming through my house. We created a bunch of exercises, okay? So this one's called Ammo Box. You always need to be prepared for the worst. Okay, now slide forward and dip your head and get out. You know, I needed a dad, and he resembled what I hoped my dad would look like. Great surfer, handsome. Robbie's root is windsurfing. So he, he was more wind-based than surf-based. And comparing Kai and I, it's like comparing a heavyweight boxer with a lightweight boxer. The wave of the millennium changed everything. That wave was undebatable. The technique actually kind of creates spots. That wave was a toe-in wave. No one can do you better than you. Hey guys, it's Laird Hamilton. Welcome to my house in Malibu. It's time for Total Freestyle.